What's up, people? Welcome to our live stream. Today, we're going to be doing an art studio hangout. And if you want to learn how to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, then check out artprop.org, where we have lots of free resources, tutorials, critiques, and all that good stuff. So what are we doing today? What's everyone doing? I'm continuing on the last piece I was doing on the last studio hangout. Alex, you're continuing the same piece from the last hangout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so still kind of plugging away on that. It's going along, making some mistakes, but. Oh, like that. Deepti, what are you up to? I am doing a selfie self portrait. You can see the selfie on the screen. Um, and I'm using uh, these Tombow brush pens. I've never used them before or really markers at all. So uh, it's, it's going okay. I started it a little bit prior to the stream. I don't really know what I'm doing, but uh, we're gonna learn together. <laughs> <laughs> Dorian, what are you up to? Uh, I am cleaning up a sketch of a character that I did a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just going to see how far I can get with them today. Clara, what are you doing? Or is that something else? Uh, this is, well, it could be for shadow boxers. I'm doing some like random characters. Like these are. I'm doing a quick skip of the fried mushrooms. I think it might be a little bit of a lag. <laughs> Which also is kind of fun. <laughs> I'm waiting for the responses to like line up well. I think well there's a major lag. And I'm going to like, <laughs> just so you know if I'm talking over you. <laughs> I feel like there's no lag for the three of us, but there is for Clara. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's so strange. The laggy stream. That's just gonna make this really fun. <laughs> and how? <laughs> Best part is gonna be like the Clara's delayed laugh at jokes. I'm gonna love that. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Wait, so Jordan, this is just... All right, uh... let's see if I can talk now. I don't know if I'm going to be behind. But I'll tell you guys what oh, I'm my... doing. Sorry! I'm, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> this is what I'm doing. This will be very fun to listen to later on. So I'm doing these draw mushrooms that I picked in this mountainside in southern Utah. And I did a wash in watercolor first, and now I'm doing some dip pen on top. What were you asking earlier, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you said this wasn't for particular projects like shadow boxes. This is just kind of flexing your character creation muscles kind of thing. Yeah, mostly. I'm still doing like a Afrofuturistic kind of influence, but um, I still, you know, these aren't characters that I have cooked up. If anything, they'd be random and, you know, I'm just going to see where I can place them at the end. Um, oh, yeah. Just having fun with them. See what I can come up with. Sweet. Ariel says, Ariel is Jordan. asking, Jordan, how do you make... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was closer, <laughs> though. That was light, closer. make light on your digital sketch? <laughs> <laughs> we got closer. That's all right. Um, OK, so to answer your question, um, I basically make a new layer. And the one with the actual drawing on it, I lower the opacity of it. So right now, the opacity is at 21. And then I sketch over that with uh, something a little more opaque. Um, it's a technique that's pretty popular um, that a lot of people find very simple. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. 
Alex, how long have you been working on this gouache painting of yours? Uh, I think I've clocked in about, let's round it up, like, eh, probably around anywhere between like six to eight hours, somewhere oh, around okay. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. And so now I, I feel like I'm, honestly, I kind of hit some roadblocks along the way. So I think I'm kind of retracing some of my steps and kind of unifying the colors and the lighting a little bit. What kind of robots? I think I was out of practice doing a piece of this size. Like the last piece I did was about half this size. And I kind of, I did the sketch for it. I was like, yes, I love it. Time to start painting. It was like, oh no, I have a lot of things I need to work out. So, which honestly I found a lot of my personal paintings are like that. I work out things as I'm painting. I almost like sketch while I'm painting. Which slows me down, but I kind of find it fun. Deep D, how are you liking the markers? I Flip like them. Sick. I just don't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, I'm like, it's hard because, I don't know, I've been working digitally a lot recently. Um, and it's so much easier to be bold, I feel like, when you're working digitally because of the option to just undo and erase. So I'm trying to come into this with that same boldness because I know it works well for me when I don't like restrict myself, but I'm also just like, mm. oh, this paper isn't like layering them, like letting me layer too much. It's kind of like ripping. I'm just learning a lot. I'm like, okay, maybe next time thicker paper. Don't really know how to use these markers, but these markers are, are great. They're Tombow and I really like them. Yeah, I'm just I've never use markers. Not not really. Yeah, I think the last time I used markers they were it was an elementary school with Crayola. I think that's about, <laughs> that's about the extent of my marker knowledge. <laughs> Ooh, uh -oh. We have lost we have lost our mothership. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's funny because like my paintings here, this camera's here. And then the computer's here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, we can, we can just hang out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the point of the stream anyway, right? We just hang out. Yeah, yeah we're just hanging. Save, when, save what you're working on so you can share it with us in the Discord, too, when we, when we find our way back to it. And if anyone sees Clara on the interwebs, to find us right this is a very nice comment we just got from cristobal it says hey everyone it's my first time here on the youtube and i just want to say that i love art prof it's been such a blessing to me and i truly appreciate all you guys that is so sweet thank you so oh, much thanks dude we thanks cristobal so, so happy awesome. that you are here oh she's back hi clara hello <laughs> Let's see, what am I doing from here? I think I gotta redraw this hat. You know, one thing I don't like drawing is characters with hats on them because you always have to get the perspective right. Mm -hmm. And uh, completely symmetrical all the time. <laughs> it always annoys me. Yeah, it's like here's a random ellipse, you know? Let us know in the comments what you guys are currently working on. Oh, we have a comment from, uh, oh, Slepnir is oh. working on his, uh, Jordan, take that comment away. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see Slepnir work on the 2500. I just had to pull it up and just be like, heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Crispy Paintbrush is saying, I'm currently on the start of my journey of starting a small stationary business selling things like art prints, handmade clay pins, postcards, etc. Does anyone have any tips or advice? Uh, Alex, cool. do you have any tips? Let's see. Yeah, starting off, um, 
advice I've found helpful is to like hit multiple different markets at the same time. Like don't just have an Etsy store be like, hooray, like it's on Etsy, have Etsy, talk to local places around town, see if there's like, cause a lot of local communities not only have in-person things, but also online local sites, even at the, their own Facebook or Instagram pages. So yeah, hit from multiple different sides, get as many people to see it as you can. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think also like see who are people who are in similar markets as you that are doing well and inspiring or like whose kind of um, approach to selling you enjoy and feel like is successful and see what kind of marketing strategies they use and see how you can implement that on your work. Yeah. Um, I guess the two good ones. I think for me, I would just say whatever you do, just make sure um, you learn how to be efficient and do whatever you can to just make it faster. Be and even if you have to delegate certain tasks to other people sometimes, because being a one man show, a one woman show is very challenging oftentimes. So get help where you need it and be efficient. So Juliet is saying they are working on a design for a super sensitive suit for science guys. Cool. Ooh. That's what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either, but it sounds like something very sick. Vivi is saying, I'm currently playing in my sketchbook with some crayons and some sort of paint that I don't know exactly what it is, but I've had it for years, so I figured I might as well play around with it. Perfect. That's Ariel cool. is saying, I am just hanging out after a too busy day, trying to soak up art inspiration, enjoying the group projects you are all working on. Awesome. Oh, John Murph is here saying, I am putting illustrations on a book I wrote. I self-published. I lengthened the book, but it needs a lot of illustrations. Wow, everyone is being Ooh. very productive. Oh, we have some more HG poke packs and working on a Halloween vampire drawing. Oh, yay. Phyllis is saying, I'm doing several versions of the same drawing in different mediums and styles. Cool, guys. Sheesh, y'all are working hard. Yeah. I feel kind <laughs> of now. I don't know what you guys are like. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz says, I'm in bed, which I respect great, <laughs> greatly. Yeah, that's something I should work on too. <laughs> Just going to sleep. Yes, same. I should honestly be in bed more often. <laughs> the stream starts and it's one of us just like on a pillow. Just... <laughs> we should do a pajama party stream, like a sleepover <laughs> stream. Oh, yeah, stream a movie and popcorn. Oh, that sounds so good. That'd be a lot of fun. I would enjoy that. We got to pick uh, the right movie, though, or the right show. Oh, yeah. The right vibe. Yeah. yeah. Something fall themed, something Halloween themed. Mm, yeah, like spooky, but not like too spooky. Friendly spooky. Yeah. What, just out of curiosity, what what kind of if you guys watch horror movies, what ones are the your favorites? Are they the more psychological ones? Are they more like the slasher ones? Or mm. that is a great kind of question. Depends on the mood I'm in, because the psychological ones always like really thrill me, but they have to be good. Like Parasite, I thought that's not psychological so much. It is, but like I thought Parasite was so layered and thoughtful, and like was like you know smart. Um, but then like the campy kind of like horror films that are just like slashery, like scream and stuff are fun, are really fun too. They're just like, you know, classic, just easy to watch, exciting movies. Mm -hmm. Very much the same. Yeah, like if I'm in the right mood for it, like old cheesy movies where you can like kind of see the boom mic and stuff, I love them. <laughs> um, but yeah, movies like I still can't get over Mandy with Nicolas Cage. That one's fantastic. Yeah, I, I like I the. I've seen that. It's wild because it's a beautiful movie, but it also involves like a chainsaw sword fight. So it's weird. Um, yeah, like I think it's. 
I think that's it is because me and my friends, we decided to watch it because we were like, oh, it's a Nicolas Cage horror movie. This will be goofy. And then we were like, wait, that was actually one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. So really weird. <laughs> Don't know what to make of it. Let's see. Oh, wow. You guys named a lot what of movies. Jordan, what do you like? Um, I'm actually not a huge horror movie fan, but if I were to watch one, I prefer things that are more psychological. Um, I just find them intensely more interesting. Just like like The Shining, I thought was really cool. Um, oh yeah, you know. But that's yeah. probably that's like my the level. I, I saw a couple of like uh, like Jason movies, and I was like, yeah, it's a good scare, I guess, but not really feeling it. Um, let me see. Clara saying Doctor Strange, Jordan. Is that that's not even a horror movie? Like, how is that even in the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Let's, let's see. Phyllis says Hocus Pocus. Seven Angelics says Beetlejuice. Jazz says 28 Days Later. I saw this movie in class one time, actually, in my high school. Oh, that's a good movie, 28 Days Later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Debussy says something with Michael Fassbender. I, I have a feeling I know who this is for, that comment in particular. Yeah, that is pointed. Was he in any horror movies? And now I'm trying to think because I I, can't, I think he might have been, but I can't place it. Our guy Michael. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. Wait, has anyone seen The Exorcist here? I have not. Oh personally. yeah. Yeah, the the classic from the '70s. Yeah, I've never seen it. I've heard it's like very twisted, and I've seen like it, spooks and stuff, but that's it. Yeah. My favorite thing about that movie is like the sound like they do this sound effect for like the demonic presence in the background and the sound designer or director or whoever they just compiled a bunch of unsettling noises and compiled the sounds together so like bees buzzing dogs barking like silverware oh. scraping against plates and they just combined all those sounds and like oh man I love it wow I'm just so glad it's fall, guys. <laughs> That's fall, why? Oh, just Halloween season and just like, I saw a next door neighbor set up like a little inflatable pumpkin outside their house and I'm just like, yes, it's, it's time. <laughs> I think I like just the weather shifting this like the trees and stuff changing colors and all that i think it's, i think that's probably my favorite part about the fall absolutely yeah <laughs> claire says i'm being that one anti-social kid in the studio <laughs> <laughs> I so art. You, you know, we all need that though. And to be fair, Claire, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. We know, we know you would love to be chatting it up with us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she's just sick of us and she pretended like her thing is. She's like, you know what? I don't feel like talking to these people today. Yeah. <laughs> that would be I just, I just got to get some work done. <laughs> that would be enough. Plot right there, just like intentionally mess up your own internet because you don't want to talk to people <laughs> <laughs> while you're live streaming. Like, not just cancel it ten minutes before it's supposed to start. It's elaborate that mastermind level. I gotta keep that in my back pocket anytime that I just don't want to people today. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Find one of those devices that like just emit like EMT pulses, you know. E not EMT. What am I thinking of? EMP. That's it. EMT. That'd be kind of dope. How hard do you do with your pieces today? Ah, oh, man. I mean, if I can settle down the colors concretely, I'll be happy. <laughs> I think I'm just torn about how vibrant I want the colors to be or how muted. Mm. 
don't know. I'm kind of not really even thinking right now. I'm just like moving. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what I'm trying to accomplish. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's going for the US, I think. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> But deep tea, we're only talking talking about our paintings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I got a little existential. On. <laughs> yeah, yo, be, be, be honest. When you guys were in art school, were there ever times where you went up to critique and you thought of like everything the piece meant to you and like why you made it like on the spot, like as your name was called? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, no, but I wish I did. That would suck. <laughs> the same answer. I didn't, but I should have a couple of times, I think. I, I think for me, I, I mostly did not, but there were a couple of times where someone would notice something that was really good. And they'd be like, oh, nice composition, nice such and such. And I'd be like, yeah, that was completely planned, you know? <laughs> Definitely done that. Definitely done that. Let's Y'all are still going on about horror movies. This is kind of funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, what are some of the good ones that people are bringing up? Uh, well, we named some of them. I, I haven't seen most. Um, oh, Silence of the Lambs. I've only oh, seen part that's... of that movie. I've only seen part of it. Unfortunately, I know how it ends. <laughs> that is, it's one of my favorite movies, not just horror movies. One of just favorite movies, period. Why is that? It's, it's such a beautiful the attention to detail throughout i think it's absolutely stellar and i like the story like the, i just like the levels within it um how old were you when you watched it for the first time it was maybe like 12 or 13. dang But I definitely liked it more as I grew older. You know, like, yeah. Man, I'm really gonna work this out. There we go. Oh, that's the stuff. It's funny is I still talk to myself when I paint, even when I'm home alone. It's, so I can't tell if this makes more or less sense. <laughs> that is a hilarious thing to say. Oh, that's the stuff. <laughs> I look like Ursula the Sea Witch in this drawing that I'm doing. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, one time when I was little, like maybe six years old, I went to see a, a Disney on Ice and with a couple friends, and um, we saw the Little Mermaid. And I remember Ursula like blew up in like this giant balloon, and she was like thirty feet tall. And it was, and you just heard the laugh, like ah, 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 ah. like how she does her evil laugh. It was, Epic. I love that. That's a really sick effect. That sounds really cool. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know how they did it because you saw the whole thing like go from like normal human size to like taking up like three quarters of the rink. It was, it was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, legit. That sounds sweet. I'm such a sucker for like practical effects and like practical yeah. magic kind of thing. I'm like, oh, nice. Because that's when it really blows your mind is when you can't be like, oh, 
they used a computer mm -hmm. or like, you know, come up with any excuses you learn. They're like, oh, well, I have no other way to explain this, but it is magic. Yeah. It's like, wow, they made that puppet and I can't believe that that puppet's not alive. <laughs> That's kind of what makes me laugh about Marvel movies because they use CGI for literally everything. Like, <laughs> like there is a scene where um, Nick Fury's holding a gun in Spider-Man Far From Home and it's like they CGI'd the gun like to make it look slightly what? different. I was like, why don't what? you just give him a different prop? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> So, because I remember for Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Chris Pratt was like so stoked to do like a live tour of the actual set that was the the ship. Like mm -hmm. it was, he was so happy that it was like practical effects. Well, really, I didn't know that. I thought, yeah, I remember there was that was back when I was still in school. There was a friend of mine who wanted to go into film, like make practical effects props. So they were really stoked. They were like. Ah, yes, they actually built the ship. Can't remember what the ship was called, but I don't either. The Star Lord ship. <laughs> Star Lord ship. Oh, I sound like I, I'm like the dad who's like tr talking to the kids about the Marvel movies. <laughs> Some, someone in the comments has to know the name of the ship. Can, yeah. can you guys let us know, please? Hmm. Hey, Didi, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Oh, yikes. Um, man, I don't know. I put you on the spot because you're the actor among us. So. <laughs> uh, uh, dang. I can't I hate this question. Um, <laughs> Too, bad. Too bad. It's already out. <laughs> I really like the movie Little Miss Sunshine. I don't know if that's my favorite movie, but that's a movie that I'll watch happily whenever. Mm. Have you seen it? I know what it is. Never seen it. That's a good one. I really like Toni Collette. I think she's a really good actor. Toni Collette. Well, what else has she been in? She was in Hereditary. She was in that movie, Muriel's Wedding. Um, yeah. Clock Watchers, I think that movie is what it's called. Clock Watchers or Clock... Yeah, Clock Watchers. It's that Australian pop comedy she's in, which is really funny. Yeah, she's I something like else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like her a lot. What's your favorite movie, Jordan? My favorite movie. Let's see. I, I, I feel like I've had different phases of my life where a movie was always, you know, my favorite until I saw the new one. As of right now, it's definitely Spider-Verse, but I think most people knew that. <laughs> um, then it's Prince of Egypt, and then after that... <sighs> Prince of Egypt is so good. Yeah. If I think of a live-action film, let me think. Um... Yeah, live action. Ooh, I like Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's a fun movie. That's animated. But I like that. mm. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. You're you're fine. You're fine. Um, I don't watch as many live action movies. I realize, but I guess I would probably say like one of the Indiana Jones movies. Like maybe mm. the Last Crusade. Maybe Last Crusade. I think or Raiders. One of those. Yeah. I'm bidding Claire's as Doctor Strange, but I have nothing to base that on. <laughs> <laughs> or like Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm wrong, Claire, you can let us let me know. <laughs> Hugh Jackman's been in some good rom-coms, hasn't he? Yeah, he was in one where he time-traveled. And he was in, like, Pride and Prejudice era. And then he time-traveled. Then he was in a Jackman? butter commercial. Yeah, he was fairly young. Clara definitely knows the name of this movie. <laughs> we eagerly await her two cents. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, who was he acting alongside? It was like he accidentally invented a time machine that brought him into 1990s New York. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. What a place. So the, rest, the rest is history. Oh, speaking of time machine, I also love Back to the Future. Just got to say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Which one is your favorite? Mine? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first one. Yeah, it's just so classic. Yeah, that I always love the line where um, where Doc is, says to Mario, "Well, who's you're from 1985? Well, who's the president in 1985?" And he's like Ronald Reagan, and he's all freaking out, like oh, the actor. What are you talking about? So, <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord. What about you, Alex? Did we talk about, we didn't talk about your favorite movie. Man, that, it is tough to answer. It kind of just depends on the mood, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think following suit for both of you guys, separating like animation, animated and live action. I really just recently saw a Millennium Actress that was animated. So good. This is by the director and animation studio that did Paprika. It was super stellar. I've seen that. Yeah, cried, cried big happy tears at the end. It was really good. Then honestly, it might be Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I might double down on that. They've got stellar. That's on my watch list on on Netflix. I gotta get into that. <laughs> I feel ashamed now. <laughs> Let's see here. I've been avoiding working on this dog. I haven't drawn in traditional media in I don't know how long. This is so weird. Honestly, same. <laughs> I can relate. Probably pitiful though to hear that. <laughs> hey, we did our time with traditional media. <laughs> Which is precisely why I won't be doing wet charcoal for you guys. I'm done with that. that nonsense. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jordan like is so other... chill, but then wet charcoal comes up and we see oh, different stuff. Just the rage. It's like I'm a veteran or something as soon as wet charcoal comes into the conversation. It's like, no, no, it was too much. It was too much, yo. Like what that meme of the. The dog wearing a helmet with like helicopters flashing before he dies. Right. <laughs> it's just too much, man. I can't handle it. <laughs> man, that this is the struggle bus. I'm including my dog in this painting. Uh, oh man, the, that's a the hard. The reason of yeah, I've never painted my dog because she's almost all black, and it's hard to paint a black dog, you know. I don't know. Would Would you just like shift it to gray or something, or how would you? You know, you know what? That's uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when I figure it out. That's that's a good idea. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I have no plan. <laughs> Got it. That's what I would do personally. But I think yeah, some grays. Or the color palette, maybe some blues, like those old 1950s comics where black was just blue. Yeah. Which always confused me, by the way. Yeah. As a kid, I was like, wait, why does Superman have blue hair? That's weird. Hey. Apparently, even Spider-Man's costume was red and black, but because there was so much blue in the shadows, everyone just thought it was red and blue, and they changed it because of that. No kidding. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Did not know that. You were like and a little fact book of Spider-Man facts. 
I got another one. <laughs> Except this time, <laughs> apparently, apparently the Hulk being green was a printing error. Get out of town. Stop yeah, he was, it. No, he was actually gray. <gasps> Ooh. So that's what, because I've seen images of quote unquote gray Hulk before. Mm -hmm. Is that, that was wow. wow, my whole life I thought he was supposed to be green. And now just just messed you up. How dare they? Damn. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild. A bunch of jokers. <laughs> Liars! <laughs> Wait, Jordan, my mom told me, she texted me today that they're building a Marvel thing at Disneyland. Or maybe they've already built it. I must attend. I must go. Yeah. I'm that like, sounds, <laughs> that sounds epic. By the way, Alex, you got a comment here from Panda Puffkin. It says, Alex, I'm trying to paint a dark brown dog in a vampire castle, and it's so hard to make him read. D yeah, like, okay, dude, uh, Panda, you and me both. We're gonna try to. We're gonna figure this out, and we're gonna connect and figure out whichever one of us solves it first. <laughs> me too. I'm doing like it's a low light scene overall. The dog's collar is the source of light. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Wait, hold on. This comment is also blowing my mind. Like finding out Oscar the Grouch on Sesame Street was originally orange before he was green. What? Did you even what? know that? Did anyone else know that? That's the first I'm ever seeing that. That's that is... bananas. I, I know know. there's. I, I really like like Sesame Street lore. Like, <laughs> I heard there was a thing. Yeah, like where whenever kids would visit the set, all the puppeteers and actors would shout like, "It's a wonderful day," so that everyone would have like clean conversations and. You know, kid appropriate stuff, which I thought was very sweet. Oh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Were there ever episodes of Oscar being orange, though? That would just look like the trash can was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the message. I don't know. <laughs> orange does not make any sense to me. Like green makes a lot of sense. Orange, not so much. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got like a, the opposite of frosted tips. It's like green, but with like dark brown <laughs> tips. Yeah, it's so it's weird. Oscar style icon. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch style icon. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity, have you guys ever heard Dave Chappelle talk about Sesame Street? No. Oh, a long time ago. Oh, gosh. I can't repeat the jokes, but you guys can find them on YouTube after our stream, and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he basically just talks about how Sesame Street really wasn't for kids. And there's oh, like, kind of like hidden subtext about stuff. <laughs> This is this is tough. This is going nowhere quick. Yeah, this is some of the most interesting color palette choices I've ever made in my entire life. <laughs> Meaning every color has been used. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta find the ones that work. <laughs> Is it like the meme, like, which color did you choose? Yes, is like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have all the markers out. And you know what? That's okay. It's all a learning process, guys. Yeah, I honestly don't know if I would paint if I, like, sat down every time. It was like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that would be boring. I guess that's part of the joy of art. Yeah. It's to be different. No, it's not like Bob Ross, but. <laughs> yeah, so philosophical. 
just need to grow my afro and it'll be complete. Grow my beard and my afro. Have you ever grown your beard or your afro for that matter? Uh, the biggest afro I had, I was like 10 or 11, and I looked like a missing member of the Jackson 5. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like, if I showed you a picture, you would all believe, like, you would all understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but my beard, my beard doesn't actually grow that long, um, as far as I know. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day when I'm like 40 and it has the ability to grow a little longer. Yeah, the second my hair starts turning white, I'm like, that's it, not cutting it, because I want to look like a wizard. You got to plan for that. You got to let it grow. That'd be so epic. I would love that. <laughs> oh, Deepti, this one's for you. W315Bird says, I'm so guilty of using all the colors. I love color. I hate color. <laughs> well then, that took a dark turn. That's your work is so vibrant and colorful. And you're like, nah, don't like it. I like it when I just stumble upon it, but when I'm given all these options and I'm just like have to use it, I'm like, why? I don't know how. That's Lauren so funny. Queen. Yeah, it's true. I find that funny for you though, because. We, you and I both work digitally primarily, and there's like millions of colors at our disposal. That's true. I don't know. I think it's just different with traditional one. It's just like at like there's all these markers, and you're like, ah, oh, they're everywhere. Fair enough. Dude, Fair enough. I feel the exact opposite. Like dabbling in digital, it's like, wow, I can use literally every color that's ever existed, and it's kind of stressful. So I don't know what to do. Maybe the digital, I'm like, oh, I can just like easily do a clipping mask and change this into a different color, you know, like hmm. the reversal aspect or changing aspect is so much easier in, in my brain. Got to make sure I get the color of my baby's eyes just right. Isn't that right, Mealy Book? <laughs> <laughs> that was very sweet. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're almost yellow. A little bit of brown on the outside. Maria Kilson says, I love color, but need boundaries in the relationship. So initial limited color palette with the option to add is what's needed. I agree mm -hmm. with that. That's how I tend to work generally. I'll pick like five colors to start off with just to keep it things together. And then I'll expand from there. Oh, yeah. That's a big preach for me on that.
right, friends, join us in the Art Prof Discord. We'll be hanging out in the post live stream channel after this uh, video ends. And we just want to give a huge shout out to our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting us and keeping Art Prof free and accessible for everyone for as long as possible. Thanks for hanging out in our studio hangout. And hopefully we'll see you in the Discord. If not, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.